This is a Porsche 911, specifically a 911 Carrera 4 GTS. And I spend way too much time on this channel talking about the 911 and even more time outside of YouTube thinking about it. But that's because the 911 is probably the greatest sports car ever made. And to make matters even better, Porsche has so many different trims to fit just about any customer. So if all you need is a sports car that you can drive every day with daily usability, you can get a Carrera or a Carrera S. It'll do just fine. Need four wheel drive? Naming is pretty simple. Get a Carrera 4, a Carrera 4S. Want a convertible? You get a Cabriolet. Kind of want a convertible? You can get a Targa. And if there's a pot of gold at the end of the Nürburgring and you need to get there before anybody else, you can get a GT3 RS. But what if you need something a little bit different? What if none of the 24 trims of the 911 serve your purposes because you need that all around usability anywhere in the world, not just on roads? Roads? Where we're going, we don't need roads. Well, Doc, Porsche has an answer for that too. It's called the 911 Dakar, and it's inspired by the 1984 Paris Dakar, where Porsche took victory in the first ever four-wheel drive 911. Being a Porsche, it isn't just about aesthetics. In every aspect, it's beefed up, primed to attack any surface you explore on world or off. It is a 911 you can drive anywhere you please. It seems to me that on paper, this car started its life as a 911 Carrera 4 GTS. And I say that because they have the same three liter twin turbocharged flat six. They make the same 473 brake horsepower and 420 pound feet of torque. But that is really the end of the similarities and the beginning of a vast array of differences because this will do zero to 60 thanks to the eight speed double clutch PDK system, the only transmission that this car has, in 3.2 seconds. And it should be noted that compared to the GTS, this is a bit longer, a bit wider, a bit heavier, quite a bit taller, and really quite a specialized product, as I shall now explain. Starting with the exterior, the Dakar is 50 millimeters taller than the Carrera, even with sport suspension. With standard lift system, that gap is furthered by 30 millimeters, both for the front and rear. This helps not only avoid obstacles, but plays into the newly calibrated suspension setup to help the Dakar cope with anything from loose gravel to volcanic rock. In its tallest setting, the top speed drops from 149 miles per hour to 105 miles per hour. Anything more and the ride height will automatically readjust. These tires are specially developed by Pirelli. They're called Scorpion All-Terrain Pluses and the tread depth alone is nine millimeters. The sidewall is reinforced. They have dual carcass tread, which I'm not really quite sure how to explain, but the benefits are that because of these tires, it has a much better off-road capability. It can really take a beating. Now there are other tire options available. You can get summer or winter tires, but I think these are the ones to go for. The front and rear bumpers are revised with stainless steel reinforcing and a red aluminum towing eye at both ends. The side skirts feature stainless steel inlays. The side air intakes are protected by a stainless steel mesh to deter any debris entry and the off-roady appearance are emphasized by the flared wheel arches and rocker panels. I mentioned weight earlier, this car weighs 3,552 pounds, so it's 16 pounds heavier than the C4 GTS. Now, don't think that means that Porsche wasn't considering weight savings because they're Porsche and absolutely they were. So things like the frunk lid, it's taken from the GT3, so it's carbon fiber reinforced plastic and it has the little nostrils in there as well. That fixed rear wing made of the same material. On the interior, you get the standard bucket seats. This car was optioned out for the more comfortable seats and the rear seats are removed entirely. One thing that I did find interesting, all of the glass is lightweight, by the way, don't wanna to forget to say that, but for the brakes, I went onto the configurator to select the Porsche ceramic brake package and not only do they not come standard for this car, they're not even an option. The Dakar features Porsche traction management all-wheel drive, rear axle steering, engine mounts from the GT3, Porsche dynamic chassis control, as well as some bespoke driving modes. Those two modes are rally and off-road mode. Rally mode is really more for uneven, loose surfaces, so it's gonna give power bias to the rear axle, let you skid about to your heart's content. 
Off-road mode is more for that arduous terrain, so it's going to put the Dakar in its tallest setting, give you that optimal ground clearance. You also have Rally Launch Control, which is really only for the Dakar, and it's an optimized version of Porsche's launch control for less than ideal surfaces, so it's going to allow for about 20% more wheel spin. The cost for all of this, $222,000. 63,800 more than the C4 GTS that it's based on, but this is a Porsche and the MSRP is only the beginning. Now for the Dakar, there are some interesting accessories and things that you can option out on the configurator that I felt were worth mentioning. So I have a list of them here with pricing. You can get a roof basket with auxiliary lighting. That'll set you back $7,550. You can get a roof cage accessory pack. That'll give you two water canisters, the canister holders, recovery boards, board holders, a folding shovel, and a water repellent outdoor travel bag. $1,512, which is not too bad. The protection package. You'll have splash guards, the rocker protection, as well as underbody reinforcement. $1,991. A roof tent, $7,029. This color with the livery is part of the Rally design package, $28,470. I should mention that the Dakar is a limited production car. Only 2,500 will ever be made, and though it is sad to me, it's unlikely that any of them will see a day with dirt on their tires. So there you have it. If you want a Porsche 911 that you can drive anywhere, here it is. I think it's a magnificent feat of engineering. I used to be an engineer, so I like to think that this is really the result of a couple of engineers joking about off-roading test cars and boom, here you go, you have a Dakar, but I don't know where the idea actually ended up coming from. Now, some people might say that it's ridiculous. They might say that it's overpriced, but this is what I have to say. It's a Porsche. I love Porsche, I love what they stand for, I love their product, it's a great product, and at the end of the day, the only person's opinion that really matters about how expensive this car is, is the person that's actually going to buy it. But really, that's all that I have to say about that, and it's all that I have for this video. So thank you so much for watching, thank you to Porsche of Ontario, where this specific Dakar actually currently is available for sale. So if you check the description, the regular links will be there as well as the posting for this car. If you are in the market for it, you come by, you see this car, just let them know that you watch this video. I would really appreciate that. And if you buy it, please, please just use the car for what it's intended for. Don't let it live out its life in a garage or at a concourse lawn. Otherwise, comment your thoughts, like and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed the video, but until the next one, thanks again and take care.